G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the northwest side of the map, playing in the color purple as the Rus, representing Team GG, we've got Chris Aor. And on the southeast side of the map in the color blue, playing as the Chinese, we've got Divine DFP. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We're on hideout, watching a ranked game at the moment. This map is still technically in the ranked ladder, in the ranked map pool. I was surprised that this one got kept in. And the reason why I'm so surprised is because this map is incredibly good for the Rus. It is just so incredibly good for the Rus. And I was like, you know, surely they don't make the mistake, the same mistake two seasons in a row, but it looks like they did. So we'll have to wait and see whether it stays in for the duration of the season or not. But I'm curious, what are your thoughts? Are the Rus unstoppable on a map like this? Do you pick them? I've, I've seen some players who, you know, don't play any other civilizations. They, you know, they'll stick with their one civ, say, I'm an English player only. But when it comes to this map, they'll still play the Rus. Because if they don't play the Rus, their chances of winning is so low. I, I think, if I remember correctly, I, I saw a statistic. It was like the Rus win 65% of their games on this map, which is kind of crazy, right? If you're talking about numbers uh, from a percentage where it's like the most powerful sieve is like 52, 53% win rate, to have a sieve that wins 65% of the time on one map, that's insane. That's absolutely crazy. But anyway, we'll look to see exactly how Divine plays this out. It's a bit of an interesting matchup. I do like this one. Um, I actually kind of like to play Feudal uh, in this matchup. So going for the two TCs, but then playing Spear Chukunu works quite well. Because even if your enemy goes into the Castle Age, you've got Chukunu that are quite strong against their Horse Archers. So, it, it you know, we don't really see Horse Archers coming out as much as we used to uh, in Season 5. So perhaps we we uh, we see Chris Ayo going for something a little bit different. We'll have to wait and see, though. Let's check in and see the hunting cabin. For some reason, is only 15 gold a minute. If I, like, before, is, is, are the nerfs that bad for the Rus? Uh, okay, they're, oh, okay, they're 31 gold a minute. You know what? It's probably just trickling in every 15 seconds. That's probably like a 62 gold a minute uh, <laughs> hunting cabin. Here I am, here I am thinking like, oh my God, they, they okay, the, the ner they nerfed the Rus. Wonderful, great. It's like, mm-mm. No, Drongo, they, they just haven't... Uh, the, the UI is not updating because uh, it, it, it slowly trickles in. Now, let's talk a little bit about this this Rus opening here because one of the great things about... Well, I thought I was on his perspective. Never mind. One of the great things about this Rus opening is that with all of this extra gold that you're getting trickled in right now, you can use that for things like Wheelbarrow. So expect to see Wheelbarrow picked up pretty early. And interesting to note, he only went for the second scout. but didn't go for a three scout opening here. And I guess on a map like this... I mean, the, does the third scout really help you out that much? Probably not, because you can assume that your enemy is going to collect most of the stuff that is behind their town center. But we do see now the Kremlin is going to be coming down here. No real surprise. We've seen everybody playing the Rus competitively going for the Kremlin recently. Now, this has been nerfed in the most recent patch. That's important to note. Uh, so specifically, we have a nerf uh, to the tickets. So the way that it used to work uh, was that as the landmark would come up, it would spawn with one ticket or one supply point doesn't spawn with one point anymore you have to wait 60 seconds for that first supply point to come in so that's essentially the nerf but over on the other side of the map we've got another nerfed landmark that was going to be going down but looks like divine cancels it puts it down again and this is an absolute banger of a spot take a look at this right here you are protecting your wood line because you know technically you're going to take wood up here but you're protecting it by stopping any kind of raids coming through here uh, you're hitting the or protecting the, the berries you're protecting your mill you're protecting your gold you're protecting your stone you are protecting all the things right here this is this is a god tier barbican quite literally this is this is amazing um, now one thing to note is that you're up against the rules of civilization with knights so one of the things i you know i often talk about my experiences throughout age of empires 4 and try and draw parallels in the game that we're seeing so I remember a game that I played very early on in Age of Empires 4 in, in the beta. And I was playing against Give You Anxiety. We we're on Hill and Dale. And I walled up the edges of my of my base, right? I, just, I walled the top side. I walled the bottom side. And I walled the front. But I left a gap where my Barbican was. Because I was like, the Barbican's there. He's not going to put any units through there. Anyway, GUA went for a fast castle and went straight into Knights. And he just ran past the Barbican. <laughs> so what am I saying? I'm saying you still got to be aware that units can come through here. It's just that they're going to take damage. So, you know, you're not going to see one archer come through on, on something like this. But you will probably see a knight, you know, make the dash across in, into no man's land over here. But we'll ride on board over towards that top side now and see exactly how Chris Ayo is doing because he's only got two bills on the landmark. So this is quite a delayed age up. 
an, an interesting strategy that he's going to be going for. It looks like it's going to be a second town center play here. Now, I guess one of the things I would note is if you're playing against the Chinese on a map like this, because this is definitely much more of a passive map, at least that's the way it feels to me, just simply because you're, you're, you're so far away from your enemy on this map, like the, the, the walk distance. You know, as, as the bird flies, it's very, very close, but the walking distance, if you want to get to the enemy base, it's a long way away. Uh, so naturally, strategies that, that go for more more town centers are going to be better. But if I were Chris Ayor here, I would be going for a third TC. I think that makes a lot of sense, especially in this matchup. You know, you just want to make sure that you're not going to be stuck behind the Chinese player. That's essentially it. But we do see the town center going to be coming down now for Chris Ayor, throwing it down on the goal, but canceling it, making sure he puts it down in the correct spot in front of the goal. You can see that the uh, we, we've got the Kremlin here. I don't, I can't see the attack range on it. I don't, I don't know exactly why that is. Normally, does it show the attack range? I'm, I'm trying to get the attack range. It's not showing it, but I would have thought that that would have pretty much covered the gold, especially if you put, like, the, the mining camp down here. But you know what? The TC, I think it would have been fine either way, but this is still a pretty decent spot for a TC. So I I, I, li I like what he's doing. I think the question is going to be whether he goes for a third TC. And in, in this matchup, I definitely feel like going for the third TC on, on a map like this especially makes a lot of sense. Let's check in with the hunting cabin. So 35 gold on this one. Uh, second hunting cabin's coming up. Probably going to be around the same number. So I'm, I'm going to take this back, and I'm going to say nerfed Rus is actually good in in the sense that it... it I don't think that this is going to be a 65% win rate civilization any anymore. And it looks like he's going to just go straight for a fast castle. So not even going to go for a third TC here. Just going for a second TC straight into Castle Age. And we can tell because he's got eight vills on gold. That is a lot of villagers to have on gold. Definitely too many. So he does pull one of them off. We can see he's going for his tier one upgrades first. I love this. T1 upgrades pay off really quickly, and I don't think a lot of people appreciate that enough. The T1 upgrades pay off so incredibly fast. Like, when, when I was doing my English theory crafting, I was practicing. I was like, okay, I'm going to do three town centers, and then I'm going to just age up without my T1 upgrades. And I would get exactly the same age up time as if I just did three TCs into all of my tier one ups. And then I would literally click up at the exact same time. It's crazy how quickly they pay off when you've got two TCs because you've obviously got twice as many villagers producing to take advantage of that. So let's check in over on the other side of the map and see how Divine is doing and whether he's looking to go in for that second town center as well. And of course he is, no real surprises there. But a bit of a late TC. I'm not sure where, where all of his resources have gone at the moment. He's got the village. Uh, I, I'll be honest, I can't explain. Is it upgrades? He's gone for a wheelbarrow, so maybe to a smaller extent. What else have we got in here? Nothing. How many Imperial officials? He's got four Imperial officials, so that's probably it. Normally, you'd only go for two Imperial officials before the, the second TC. Uh, where is that second TC coming down? He's... Oh, wait, there it is. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at the resources. I'm like, he doesn't have the, the, the TC, the resources for a TC anymore, so it's got to be down, but I couldn't see it anywhere. So going for next to the town center, this is a really good spot uh, to be placing down the second town center because you can see the Imperial Academies here. It's going to be providing influence in the back of the base. So not the best spot. You don't really have a whole bunch of room to move with all of your production. But one of the things to note is that by putting the TC here, you're, you're maximizing that efficiency as well because there's not really a whole bunch of buildings that you can make up here anyway. So... I think this is a great little spot. And now it looks like we might just have Castle Ages coming through from both of these guys. He's only got the two Vils on the gold for the moment. But with the Imperial Officials, the fact he's got four Imperial Officials and he's getting Imperial Examinations, this thing, th these guys are going to be dropping off so much damn tax at this Imperial Academy, or at the, uh, at, at the Lumber Camp. Not to mention the fact he's also getting in this Tier 1 upgrade. So we're really seeing a an interesting development with the way that economic matters are playing. And I think that a lot of this has been shaped by Marine Lord. We saw Marine Lord in a game uh, that he played. It was, if I remember correctly, it was part of the EGC TV Elite Classic series where he went for uh, all his T1 upgrades before he went for his first additional town center. So technically his second town center. So I, th I think that that may have definitely shifted uh, these upgrades in some people's minds because I remember watching games where you'd see people that just wouldn't even get T1 upgrades until they're at like 50, 60 villages, that sort of thing. And now we can see them coming in around the 40 villager mark. So still quite early. But uh, one thing to note, we've already got a transition into farms for a Rus player. And this feels very strange, right? Like, you, you look at this and you go, this doesn't make sense. What is going on here that the Rus player feels the need to go for farms? Now, I, I will remind everybody, these two players are Conk 3. So they know what they're doing. It's, this is not a classic case of the Gold League farm. The, the, the Gold League uh, Sim City uh, uh, farming... Uh, what, what, uh, what you, what's it called? Farmville? I guess you could call it, you know, SimCity Farm Edition, something like that. Uh, that you know, th this, this is not that case. I mean, th there is a, an element of uh, SimCity 
farm edition here, but I, I can tell you right now, it's not going to be the golden one. That is for sure. This is the conqueror flavored one. But as we begin to cross that 10... Oh my God, we got double farms coming down. I get, you know what? It's probably just a case of not having any units out. You, and if you don't have units out, you can't protect your villages that are out on the map. So it's probably just easier to make farms in your base. I guess that's probably the, the justification here. But we've got farms coming down already at the 10 minute mark for both players. And we do now see the age up coming through for Chris Ayor. Going to be going for the high trade house. Let's see exactly where he's put it down. And boy, oh boy, is that going to be an absolute banger of a high trade house. Now, we can't check exactly what his um, bounty is. I can tell you that much. But I do know that it's at least 100, which doesn't tell you absolutely anything. Um, but actually, one of the things that we can do... So this was on 30, and then it moved to 35. So I think that he's probably still on that between 100 and 250 bounty. But it will continue to go up throughout the game as the high trade house will spawn in those deer. So that will slowly push him up towards it. There's been a couple of changes to this landmark and the way that it interacts with the hunting cabin. Uh, most notably, the fact that um, it that they no longer cancel each other out. So that's really important. So let's see how much of a banger of a landmark this bad boy is going to be right now. I'm, I'm guessing, actually, do we even get to see it? Because, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take time to trickle in. Uh, so we might have to come back and check this in a minute's time, that sort of thing. Now, we'll just take this quick opportunity as uh, we do see the next landmark coming down on the other side of the map just to let you guys know if you are enjoying the video, feel free to like it. It does help out a huge amount. So please leave a like if you do enjoy this content. And if you'd like to see some POV perspective 1v1 stuff, uh, I can tell you right now, it will be coming up for... Uh, it, the question's going to be what Civ... I still don't know what Civ I'm going to play. I'm, I'm kind of... I'm, I'm Yeah, look, I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm still just... I'm confused at this point. I'm, I'm a man who doesn't know what he wants. Anyway, on the other side of the map, we'll check in with our hunting cabin and see how it's doing. We're at the 11 minute 40 mark here. 119 gold. I don't know whether that's going to double up to 240 or 238 gold. That's a pretty decent amount of gold when you think about it, right? You're talking one and a half relics right there. So not too bad at all. Indeed, it will double up. I take that back. That's three relics worth of gold that are coming in right now from this. Not to mention the free deer that keep coming in. The fact that that's also going to be pushing up the bounty. Uh, so we can see his bounty still sitting at 35, which means he hasn't hit that second level just yet. All right. Well, the walls are continuing to come up for divine. Now, one of the things I love to do on this map, and it, it seems a bit weird, but I promise it works. What you Instead of walling your base this way, I, I, I still do do this, uh, but... I like to draw a wall from here out to the edge of the map. And then I draw another wall from over here to the edge of the map. And then I take this space and I make this my base. Uh, so I'll put my farms in between here. Because often on this map, I find I don't have a lot of space in the back of my base. You can see right now a little bit of a cheeky, a little bit of a cheeky scout right now. These guys are, are they're, they're kind of chopping towards each other. So we may potentially see a game, you know, a late game situation where we've got that happening. Now, take a look at the destroyed value at the moment. At the moment. 750 versus 728. I'm pretty confident that's the cost of a town center. And I'm pretty sure that's damn close to it as well. Now, I don't know why it's just going up slightly. It went up from like, what, 738 to 742? But we, we've got a destroyed town center over here. And then I think we've... Or a canceled town center. And then we've got something else. I don't even think these guys have traded out units yet. But we do start to see the first units of the game making their way over towards the enemy side of the map. We can hear the relics getting picked up. Four relics on the map right now have been picked up, have been held in the hand of Chris Ayor. He's going to be looking to deny them away. He's got the fifth one up here towards the north side. So Divine not even interested in it. He is just going pedal to the... Wait, is Divine going imp? Is Divine just going straight imp? Okay. That is an interesting... I, I did not expect that. Wall coming up over towards this east side of the map. You can see there's another wall coming down towards the south side as well, coming through from Chris Ayor. Uh, but uh, looks like this one on the north will not come up. So going to be a fortified palisade wall down on this south side. So... That leaves the question, what is Divine possibly doing here? Look how fast this Imperial is going to be. We're at 14 minutes in. He's, he hasn't made a single unit. I say he hasn't made a single unit. He, he's got a Spearman out. Yeah, I think he lost two Spearmen just before. And he's training an Esther Bees. But this is... Look, we talk about naked fast Imperial. This is as naked as it comes. I mean, it, 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 it's he's got the little leaf in front, all right? That, that's the extent of it. But it's going to be a spirit way that goes down. Now, what ways can he take advantage of this? Number one is definitely the Jagunu. I'm, I'm still a huge fan of this unit. I think it is massively underrated. I genuinely think it's one of the best units in the game, even in the late game. But there's a there's a caveat to that, and that is as long as you're not at 200 population. Because once you're at 200 population, you need to start grinding your units back down to like 190 so you can start rebuilding them, remaxing, that sort of thing. But the Spirit Way makes the Jukunu one of the best units in the game. It, it has 33 damage every shot. 
It has extra 20% attack speed. It's got heals over time and extra. It does 20 health over 10 seconds, which is a huge proportion of its health pool. So does he look to go into that? We'll find out. That is for sure. But now Chris Sale is going to have to respond. And oh my God, the fast Imperial meta is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. The high armor ring is going to be coming down right now. What in the world are we watching right now? A little bit of a weird spot, though. Normally, you'd want to be putting your farms down in the back of the base. But I guess real, realist. Oh my Lord, look at the production that's coming down right now from these two guys. They're just going balls to the walls when it when it's uh when it's production time. This is this is shaping up to be a good. Uh, uh, look, I'll be honest. I hope you guys have got something to drink. I hope that you're sitting back in the armchair. You're gearing up for an imperial age. Look, if you probably clicked on this video, I'm confident that it mentions the fact we are in an imperial age arms race. That is what is happening right now. These two players are racing towards imperial age, and we've got hand cannons now coming out for divine. I guess hand cannons make sense. The spirit way can kind of be buffed up. Like, you, you just throw out a Jukunu and delete it. Maybe that's what he's looking to do. Or maybe th this was just the landmark he was going for. He didn't he didn't have the stone to put down a stone wall, maybe, or something like that. And well, to be honest, it's probably not, like, the best spot to be putting down the uh, the defensive landmark, even though there's a big attack coming through at the moment. So Chris Ayo reaches the Imperial Age. A whole bunch of upgrades starting to come through, including Pyrotechnics, one of my favorites. Nesta B is firing off. Keep in mind the monks, or the warrior monks here, will have the ability to heal all of that up. On the other side of the map, though, some interesting upgrades going to be coming through. Boyar's Fortitude increases the health of cavalry, Rus cavalry in particular, by 30. So I guess that, that you know, if you wallalol a villager from an enemy... Does that even work? If you wallalol a villager from the enemy, can you build their buildings? Surely not, right? That doesn't... That, that, that wouldn't make sense. I think you'd probably just end up building your buildings, right? Do you guys remember playing... I, I remember playing StarCraft 1 when I was a kid, and I would... You, I would play Protoss, and I'd get the Dark Archon, I think it was called, and I would mind control a Terran unit. And the Terran, if you were playing uh, like different, if you had different factions or different uh, different races, you had different population limits for each of them. And I remember playing a game with my dad, and I had like max battle cruisers, max carriers, and then like max. I, I don't think they were corruptors back then. I, 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 I want to say they were like these sludge things. I, I remember they were, they were like they they would spit out sludge. That's that's what I remember. It was like purple goo, and that, that was what you made. Because like for me and my dad, the meta was like massing air back then. <laughs> like it was always in every game that we played, we massed air. Uh, total annihilation. It was just like you know hawks up against vamps in the in the in the late game. It, it was always I don't know. Maybe we just, that was just the place the, the meta between uh, between us. But anyway, the imperial palace has come down, and we can see he's looked to utilize the imperial. Imperial spy ability spots out the enemy positions as well sees that there's no trade coming in spots that there's not a whole bunch of farms in here so he doesn't have to be particularly worried because at this point both of these guys are just chilling out right we're we're gearing up for the imperial age we're here we're post imp at this point and look at the upgrades that are coming through all of those blacksmith upgrades coming in right now we've also got greased axles on the other side no way are we just going straight into fire lances is that literally this game are we just casting a game that goes imperial age into fire lances because <laughs> that's kind of wild Four Fire Lancers now in queue. Just, I love the fact that he only defended with just a handful of uh, of hand cannoneers and a nest of B, and that was it, and then just never made more units than, a, than that. I mean, he's got his walls, right? Like, what are you going to do to a man behind his walls? Not a whole lot. I guess he's got the keep here as well, but... Oh, yeah, it's he's literally just going full. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're about to find out why the Fire Lancer is considered to be one of the strongest Imperial Age units now keep in mind this unit did actually get nerfed the elite fire lancer the torch damage got reduced it still has a lot of torch damage if you were to compare it to say a villager which has got torch damage of 10 the fire lancer's got a torch damage of 34 but that's a lot less than what it used to be it used to only have it used to have a torch damage of 44 if i remember correctly it might, might be a little bit lower than that but the, the numbers got reduced by about 25 percent which is a lot when you when you think about you know those late game situations it's, it's basically like taking your your army of 60 fire lances and just bringing it down to 45. That, that's probably the best way to think about it. But more and more upgrades going to be coming through on both sides. Ranged armor coming through for Divine. Meanwhile, on the west side, biology coming in for Chris Aor. What What direction does he look to go? And now we've got ourselves a little bit of an attack coming in. Elite horsemen are already on the way through. Horse archers behind this. Village is going to be running for dear life as they hold on. And the walls get broken down. With that... Down towards the south side, the unit's looking to regroup and head back towards this central location. Villagers on the run right now, trying to find a way to survive. The first, I'm not going to say the first villager kills of the game, but definitely the 
the uh, the most interesting villager kills of the game now because we've, we've got ourselves a little bit of a breakout attack. Villagers do fall back. He should have just walled himself in. I don't know why he just didn't create a wall for, him, for his villagers there. Under threat, though, Hand Cannoneers should be able to clean this up together with the Fire Lancers. He loses out a couple of villagers. We can see he's into the double digits on the losses now. So Chris Leo managing to pick up a couple of kills here and does slowly but steadily even up that villager count. Keep in mind, he's got a couple of things working in his favor. He's got relics behind this as well. Not to mention the sacred site that's been captured. He's got, he's got passive gold coming in. So definitely the economies are in an interesting spot now. But of course, the attack gets completely cleaned up. Let's do an eco assessment right now. That's been the theme of the game so far. It's been the economy. It's all about the Pentiums, baby. Uh, let, let's let's talk about it. So, Chris Ayo is sitting on a huge amount of passive gold that's coming in. 238 from the high trade house, uh, together with all of the, the hunting cabins. I don't see all of their positions, uh, but th there's undoubtedly quite a bit. In fact, he hasn't really put down a whole bunch of them. So you're talking about maybe 300 passive gold coming through from there. He's also picked up five relics. So that's 400 passive gold. So you're talking about 700 passive gold plus the 800 passive gold being the, the sacred site. So he's sitting on a decent amount of gold coming through passively. And you might not, you might look at that and scoff and think, ah, oh, you know, but you know, Imperial officials. Yeah, but that, that's infinite gold. And that's forever, baby. I guess at the same time, you know, there's two things that they say are forever, death and taxes. And I guess taxes are technically also forever in this game as well. So that's always a factor to consider. But attacks underneath the Chinese keep now. It's going to be difficult to, to really pull out. And you can see that Chriseo's committing to a, a huge focus on the villagers here, but he's throwing away a lot of his army. And behind this, Divine just continues to build up a massive amount of Fire Lancers. At the moment, it doesn't seem like there's a breakthrough happening. But there is the potential for it. And we can see that the wooden fortresses now getting exposed. So able to see over the top of the tree line because he's got the Imperial Palace. He sees everything that's happening here. And now that high armory, which was put kind of on the back line as a, you know, as, as an important landmark, gets relatively exposed. And this is kind of dangerous, right? You didn't go for the Spaskaya Tower against China. And the China have got fire lances. So now you're starting to talk a dangerous game because all of a sudden I've got fire lances out. How are you going to catch them? How are you going to beat them? How are you going to kill them? These are all factors that you've now got to kind of consider because before the answer was easy. Before it was just, oh, I make stone walls because I've got the Spaskaya Tower. But we don't have the Spaskaya Tower. Now those hand cannoneers got to push out. Chris Hill might be in trouble here. He's got a decent economy behind this. You can see him continuing to pump out units. All of his upgrades coming through, at least all the relevant ones. But the d distinct lack of, of units out here was going for a whole bunch of infrastructure. Gonna get caught off guard a little bit right now. Divine gonna start to push through down on this front. The Imperial Age, I mean, you go up against China. Let's talk a little bit about Rus, though. The Rus are, are significantly nerfed on this map and now keep gonna be thrown up in the back line here. He's very fearful of an attack coming through. Meanwhile, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be scared of an attack on the back. I'd be scared of an attack on the front. Look at this. this these Fire Lancers are rampaging over that front line now. You've lost everything. You definitely played played your uh, played your cards. I, I, I don't know if that was... You showed your hand. That's that's probably what I want to say. You showed your hand uh, w when you went for those attacks like that. And it, it meant that in the rear, there wasn't a whole bunch of stuff there. Let's talk about farm transition. How many vills... Or how many farms do we have at the moment uh, for Chris Ayo? 37. Definitely not, not superb. Ideally, you'd probably be looking for about that 50 mark at the moment. Let's check in over on the other side see how many farms we've got 41 so not the highest either maybe players are looking to focus a little bit more on on siege that could be understandable but now we've reached that that ultimate moment for the chinese i'm maxed out what do i do here well i can go and send my units into the enemy oh my wait the walls come in on here but there's no wall at this point Maybe that's intentional. Maybe he wants to guide the army up towards this position. Streltsy going to be coming through. A whole bunch of units sitting inside the battering ram. Excuse me, sir. Your battering ram is full of units. Great wall gatehouse going to be going down inside the forest. Talk about defense. Nesta bees, you're not helping out, buddy. You're, uh, you're hurting. You're hurting right now. Oh, the secret great wall gatehouse. It's the gatehouse tech, baby. What are, what are all these? What's going on in this? Chris, are you going to wake up, son? 16 units inside. What are they? Oh, they're Streltsy. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> Look at the Streltsy. They got completely rampaged, though. I, wouldn't you have loved these on the front line when, when all of those units were pushing through? And now the Fire Lance is getting eaten alive on the backside by the Horsemen. But at the same time, let's focus on the middle of the map. You know what we're going to do? We're taking a picture of it, ladies and gentlemen. It's happening. It is high view. I wish I could zoom in. I wish I could get an angle on this. But the best I can give you right now is this. <laughs> This, this is the epitome of Highview, at least in my mind. This is, 
you know, when people talk about high view, this is it right here. All right, let's get that UI back on, though. Where are my buttons? There are my buttons. And that push towards the base. Really starting to struggle. You can see the hand cannon is coming up empty, fighting up against the Kremlin together with the keep. How many tickets we got on that Kremlin? 19 tickets on that Kremlin. If you want to pop it, you got it. But you can see him slowly working down the wooden fortress. If we ride on board from Chris Ayo's perspective, you can see he barely sees anything. All he, all he sees, all, all he gets are, are, are the sounds, really. Up towards the north, Fire Lance is coming through. Divine says, hey, mate, you wanted to try and raid me? This is how you really do a raid, and he just taps out. He says, I can't handle the heat. Get me out of the kitchen, and indeed, he taps out. Ladies and gentlemen, a little bit of a weird one, a little bit of a fun one. Divine DFP, make sure you go check him out. He's our victor for today. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can watch him live over on Twitch. A great player, very, very strong, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.